We've seen the Pentium overkill, now it's time for the Pentium overspill. Hello everyone, I'm High Treason, and I think anyone who's been messing with this stuff for a while probably is steadily amassing a pile of hardware that is kind of neat, it's kind of interesting, but you're never really going to use it. And, you know, it has quarks, it, it's not really the most compatible. And that's what this machine is, it's just a load of stuff that it's not particularly compatible or reliable, but it's still fun to mess with. And I had enough I can make a whole machine out of it, figured I would. Might as well make a video on it. Some issues here and there, we'll talk about them later, you, you'll probably notice something's off, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. So, uh, let's get down to this, let's get on with it. Before we go any further, this curse really stood out to me, because, well, it was for sale in my town, and where I used to work, I had basically this exact same case, and I, I used it to build a crappy little machine for the side of my desk. I couldn't help but wonder if it was the same one, given the stamp in it was in the same place ours would be. However, it doesn't look like the name of the company I worked for, and I can't find markings that I distinctly remember putting inside the case, and they're in such an obscure spot that I doubt anyone would have cleaned them off. So yeah, it probably isn't my old case, but uh, it's kind of neat, it's close enough I suppose. On the subject of the case, it really is quite plain in its design. It's nothing too special, very mid-90s, has no turbo display, it does have a place to mount one behind the black panel, otherwise CD drive, floppy drive, that's what's at the front, it's no big deal. The back of the system is a little more interesting, yeah, power supply, AT keyboard port, standard I.O., but you'll also notice the SCSI and a weird looking VGA card and a rather well known sound card we already talked about. This is a system whose platform would be a little hard to guess if you didn't know what was in there. The position of the SCSI and VGA card suggests either the SCSI is PCI and the VGA is ISA, or else the system's all ISA, which would mean it'd be in early 486 at the newest. At best, if the SCSI is PCI, the VGA card might be VLB, implying a later 486 with a VIP board. Of course, we know it's neither. Inside is this weird motherboard, which seems to be from an AT&T plinth system, or possibly a globalist. And George Soros and the globals, the New World Order. I'm not sure, because I can't find one anywhere, or any pictures, so I guess it didn't sell well, whatever it belongs to. And whilst this is a pointless detail, it's not square. Yeah, it has this weird little outcrop at the top, and it makes it difficult to fit into some cases, if not impossible. It's not the only board I've seen with this kind of thing. Uh, there was a Socket 7 board, I think, made by Zeda, which had a much more pronounced slant along its right edge. Or would that be the front edge? Our board here is Socket 4. It already makes it unusual, purely because it's not really a very widespread socket. And this board had to go a step farther and include VLB slots. Two of them are present. One of them's unpopulated. There's so few Socket 4 boards are in circulation, they might actually have an alarmingly high proportion of boards with VLB slots. Certainly more than Socket 5. And to be honest, it's probably even a higher ratio than 486, if only because there are tons of those little boards with PQFP processors for that platform, all of which are ISA only, despite being made late on. I mean, let's be honest, there are fairly few Socket 4 boards left, and people are bound to keep the weird ones like this. You'll notice the Opti chipset. I've never had this on any other board, and it seems to be a little finicky, maybe a little unstable. Which has been par for the course with Opti chipsets in my limited experience with them. They made good peripherals, but your motherboard chipsets... Hmm... Once it's set up the way it wants to be, it will usually work. I bet my Sys 500 one is faster though, and it certainly works better. There's also this smaller chip, which acts as a bridge, yeah, that's right, it's not real VLB. Instead, they hang off the end of the PCI bus, but it doesn't seem to disable any slots per se. It does affect stability if you try to use all of them at the same time, though, so that's worth bearing in mind. That might just be the Opti chips that have been a bit crap, though. I, I don't know. It's, it's not really the best motherboard in the world, this thing, for reliability. 
Still, it means we have VLB to PCI instead of genuine VLB, and so it may be a little slower than the real thing. I can't really imagine you would have real VLB on a Pentium board, so expecting that would be unrealistic. The board does have a clock divider for this though, so, well, it would have no problem with faster clocks that Pentiums run at, unlike you'd run into on a 486DX50 or Next Gen 586, for example. And on the subject of clocks, the motherboard has no d -tabo, but it does offer some unusual clock speeds for a Socket 4 board. So I hooked the turbo switch jumper to uh, one which will let us run things at 33 MHz. There should be some undocumented speeds, and also 50 MHz is possible, which was once a planned speed for the original Pentium, supposedly. So we would be able to test that. I'm not very interested in the speed of the machine, though. It, it was built from parts I wasn't ever really going to use. They, they all have quirks that limit their usefulness. They, they're kind of interesting, though, and it, it seemed a shame to waste them. And so, hey, this is the uh, Pentium overspill for a reason. It's the overspill of hardware we're never going to use. It's a quirky system with a bunch of novel stuff. I have a Pentium 66 if I want practical. I have a K5 if I want practical. You don't always have to build a practical system. As long as you're having fun in this hobby, I guess that's all that matters. By all means tell me this thing's a heap of crap, because in many ways it is, it's just a particularly fun heap of crap. The SCSI card is just plain old Adaptech 2940 stuff, not the uwu version. Nick is a real tech. Turbo LED connects to this, so we get network activity displayed on the front panel. The motherboard has no header for a turbo LED. Obviously, regular MIO card. I already have an entire video on this sound card, but yeah, it's a Gravis Ultrasound. Um... Yeah, it belongs in here, because, as we established, not the most practical card. It's a bit of wankwa. Probably fit well in your uh, Pentium Pro Quad fucking CPU 3DFX Sly Windows ME machine. What we haven't talked about yet is the VGA card, and it'll probably get its own video someday. It's a Peacock Movie Media. It's a combination VGA and video capture card. It uses the ET4000W32P, but it doesn't use the Viper chip for video acceleration, instead using this third-party thesis one for video scaling and such. It does seem to work. It also offers a TV tuner and a couple of other inputs. These seem to write over the frame buffer directly rather than use a feature connector pins, as we can still view captures in higher color depths. And strangely, the card doesn't even use a special driver, it uses the standard ET4000 driver, any of those will work, and the video capture part is handled largely by software. It's a little strange, this application. Also, the feature connector is still present, and it can be used. I considered installing an MPEG card and connecting it to that, but as this system is as uh, fast as it is, it wouldn't really need it. My 66 MHz Pentium can almost play VCDs in software, and only just barely benefits from its own scenic decoder card. This thing runs, well, it, it's a Pentium Overdrive, it's a chip we've seen before, and it runs at 133 megahertz. It essentially been the P54 core from Socket 5 CPUs. We tested it already, so I won't be going over it too much here, but yeah, we did get some weird results with this. The CPU has access to 512k of level 2 cache, half that of my main Socket 4 system, which has 1 meg. There's also 32 megs of RAM installed, most likely, but I keep borrowing it, so we might be on 16 or 64 or god knows when we test this. I don't like the cache implementation. They, they have double sockets, but if you want one meg, you have to do it with just eight chips. Kind of sucks. You might recognize the hard drive as the one I had in the T6600C. I'd taken it for use in the DX50, but decided to move it here. I'm not sure the DX50 will ever get its SCSI back, uh, whether it'll go to IDE, as there's not really much advantage to having SCSI in there, and I only did it to see if I could get away with it, which I did. So I guess I was just lucky. Anyway, we'll see. The hard drive isn't exactly the fastest, but it's not really very slow either. I do still like this NEC CD-ROM drive, what with the controls and the LCD. I'm fairly certain it started as an external drive in a caddy. You could carry it around and use it as a portable CD player. In a PC, you can actually still use the controls that way to play CDs with an application. So, yeah, you can totally listen to the Mad Panic Coaster soundtrack or something while you're working in DOS. 
But I don't spend too long on this machine, so I don't do that very often. Shoving power into the machine will get us into this slightly awkward bias, which isn't even the original from this board, because the one it came with was quite locked down and annoying, and it had stability issues, didn't support overdrive CPUs, barely seemed to support regular P5 CPUs, had problems with PCI cards, had problems with, uh, you know, ROM bias on, on peripheral cards, i.e. the SCSI wouldn't work. So, yeah, th this one's a little better. Beyond that, we can, of course, boot DOS and Windows. We know the drill by now. And we can play with the interesting stuff, namely the Peacock card. It actually seems to be pretty capable, and it works quite well, but it is also extremely speed-sensitive, where it really, really wants a 33 MHz VLB clock. Anything higher, and even most lower speeds, will stop it from working. They won't damage anything, but until you put it back to 33 MHz, it ain't gonna work. Of course, as we established, this board has a clock divider, so at 66 MHz, divide by 2, it's running at its intended speed. And it's not that unusual for video cards, you know, things related to video, to be quite sensitive. My WinTV celebrity really insists on a standard ISA clock. My Scenic MX2 really insists on a standard PCI clock, and there's not much leeway in either direction. Still. The picture on this peacock is pretty clear, and the latency is extremely low, but if I really, really analyse it, it is there, and it is detectable, unlike with the WinTV Celebrity. Unfortunately, there are no capture tools included, and while still, whilst I could try to use a third-party tool, I wouldn't be able to show this today due to some technical issues that have cropped up before we could really try. So we might have to come back to this, and I think the card probably does maybe deserve not necessarily its own video, but we have some other capture hardware that we could throw in there. Uh, unfortunately, my Atari 7800 wouldn't work with it, but then nothing ever manages to tune into those because their RF modulators are notoriously bad. Dreamcast worked fine with it, though. Played like shit because the only controller I could find was a bit broken. However, yeah, the, the card does what it's supposed to do. Of course, nothing will ever remove my preference for the Pentium 66's setup with the WinTV Celebrity, but that's because I'm a little biased as, well, really that was my first capture card, or the first one I ever used. Not that specific one, and I'm not even sure it was the same model, I, I suspect it was a high Q, and I only had it on loan from somebody, but yeah, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm always going to gravitate towards that as a result. Uh, I suppose speed-wise this board is a, uh, generally slower than my Abit PS5. We know that board quite well, but again, I don't really care because the, the point of this machine wasn't to be that fast. And as I've always said, benchmarks are interesting, but they're not the end of the world. And if the machine's doing what you want it to do, as well as it needs to, it doesn't really matter what numbers come out. They're just fucking numbers, and this machine is doing its job as well as I want it to. Some things it can't run, can't run second reality, but it doesn't matter, you know, it's it, it's just for fun, so who cares. I've got, I got plenty of machines that work better than this if I need to run things, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Actually, to be honest, performance-wise, this thing is a little bit pathetic. It does struggle to outstrip the 66 MHz system by as much as it should. And I'm not going to read the numbers out to you, but uh, as you've noticed, there is a chart. It's kind of crap overall. Make of it what you will. As noted, I really don't care. It doesn't matter. And in all honesty, I've got little else to say, and other things I wanted to say I just can't demonstrate today, so... Well, I guess it's back to that dickhead with the camera. Uh, um, yeah. It's his problem now. So there you go, that's a look at the Pentium overspill, as I call it. It's an overspill of hardware we're never going to use. Doesn't really matter. I have the Pentium 66 and the K5. They will run things reliably. This thing doesn't need to. It, it doesn't matter, you know. It's, I'd rather use the hardware than waste it, so hey, you know, it's, it is what it is. So the problems I mentioned, yeah, they're big problems. Workstation's not working right. Not 100% sure what's wrong with it, but there's something wrong with the PCI Express on it. I thought my StarTech card had stopped working. I was literally using it, then I closed the application to go and do something else. Then the application wouldn't open again. If I use another application, it just crashes. Blue screen. Uh, or as close to a blue screen as you have in Windows 10. 
you know, like, ah, fuck, my StarTech card's died. I'll have to get another one. I don't really have the money for that right now. But I'll manage. I'll, I'll figure it out. Sell something. Sell that uh, other Amiga CD32 I've got or something. Because that was an investment game. And it's like, it, it paid off. It, was, it cost me like five quid a console in the mid-2000s. You know, I don't make a loss on that. <laughs> it, but uh, anyways, yeah, uh... Then I realised the other one isn't working. There's two capture cards and neither of them work. And so I tried borrowing the Intensity Pro out my Presla, plugged that, it doesn't even get detected. That thing's fucking useless anyway, but, you know, it would have at least told me, hey, the system works, you're going to have to order two capture cards now. Doesn't work in there. Took it back to the Presla, and now it won't work right in there, so I don't know what's happened to it. It does get detected in there, it just isn't very stable. And the, the picture's a bit crap. But we saw that going towards the end of me using it. So, you know. And the thing is, I wouldn't want to go back to the Intensity Pro. Because we'd be stuck in 576p50. Which I don't want to go back to. And all my setups for 60 hearts now. And I can't do it in the Presla. Because now it only has about 100 gig space. On very slow drives. And so, you know. It's, raw video on that, it's not going to happen. They're, they're very slow. And you wouldn't be able to get much on there. So... Uh, yeah, capturing's gonna be a problem this year. I'm not sure what we can do about it. We'll do something. But the workstation it isn't working so good. Need a new one anyway. Motherboard is still under warranty as far as I can tell. I'd like to know what they'd replace it with. Um, I'd rather not have the same one, because it's time for an upgrade. And there's, I don't want to upgrade. That machine should be good for a few more years. Its workload hasn't increased, but we're at a point where it's almost as slow as a Presla at rendering. And that's because of software updates. As all the software advances, uh, read, devolves, it gets fucking slower, and it cripples my machine. And so I have to upgrade when I don't fucking need to. And I, I'll be honest, it's probably the last upgrade I'm going to do. Like, once whatever I replace it with, probably a W2200, once whatever I replace it with is done, I don't see myself upgrading again. Like, at that point, I'll just buy a cheap little netbook or something, or whatever the fuck everyone has now, and I'll just make do with that and just become a fucking consumer, like, user, you know? Because <laughs> it... I do this for fun, and the fun is rapidly going away. Because trying to do things on modern computers are a pain in the ass. The hardware's fucking horrible, the software's fucking horrible, nothing fucking works, everything takes ten times longer than it should, the interfaces are convoluted because they break all the fundamental design uh, principles and rules of UI design that have been established for years. And I just, it's annoying. I don't enjoy it much anymore. I still enjoy it enough to do it. It's going to be a long way yet until I stop. But I will stop someday. I can't do this forever. And it, it's, it's starting to piss me off. I, I'm tempted to do a video on it because I have a theory on it. Like the, the people who design this, they use fucking iPhones. They don't use computers. It's like laptops, right? You look at that old Zenith I've got, and it's a bit weird. Like, you're looking, why is that that shape? Why did they put that there? Why have they done that that way? That's weird. And then you use both of them for a while. You use my modern one and that one. And I notice, I don't have fucking cramps in my hand all of a sudden. That's why it's that shit. That's why there's that weird little bend there. You know, it seems completely pointless. Because you realise the person who designed that, or the people who did used computers, they understood what they were doing, and they probably had issues with that themselves, like, that's fucking annoying, let's not have that now, let's change that, make that that weird shape, so it just fits just in the edge of your hand when you rest your hand on it. Fuck that on the Elite book, it's all sharp corners and edges, my hands cramp up when I've held it for a long time. It, it's simple things that have just been lost, ports stick out and then they get broken and dirty because the, there's no protection on them at all. And it's the same with software. The people who, I swear, the, the people who design the operating systems and the utilities don't use computers. They, they don't know what they're fucking designing for. They, they used a phone. They were tapping on a fucking eye slab while they were designing it. I guarantee it. Like, it's just fucking dumb. The design is so bad that anyone who actually used this shit would never build it that way. Then Windows 95, you can tell the people who designed that they designed an OS that they wanted to use, like they designed an OS that they would themselves use. And so whether consciously they thought of it or not, it was certainly there in their brain, like, well, let's not design it that way, or let's actually design it this way, because that makes fucking sense. 
So it's been lost over the years. But I can rent all day, and like I say, maybe that'll get its own video. Other videos, uh, Kogo one demo needs doing. I did one years ago, and I didn't know it was broke, so I bashed the fuck out of, like, you know, this thing's horrible, it's not what fucking supposed to be, yeah. And it turned out it was broke, and so <laughs> I've always meant to do a proper demo of it. Still want to do one of Profit 5 as well. So we can do those things, because I don't need capture for them. We can still look at hardware and shit, and I still will, but... Yeah, captures, I'm not sure I'm going to do them because it's really not practical to run more than two machines at once. I can't really get the Xeon out of there and then just put it back in willy-nilly. So, you know, I need I need a third machine to do capture. Like, you know, the Xeon bin, the, the capture thing and whatever I'm trying to capture. I don't have room for that in this house. Uh, uh, could use a VCR maybe. I, I don't know. I'll come up with some... Uh, if it's, not, it's nothing that important, we can just point the camera at the screw. I don't like doing that, but hey, you know, we'll we'll have to do what we'll have to do. We'll get there. I don't really have out else to say on this. Um, yeah, things go the way they go, and uh, that's the way it's gotten. It's uh, we'll, we'll get out of it, but you know, I, I just bought that synth, so I don't, I don't have money to barn right now. So it's probably going to take me a, a year or. Maybe two to, to actually be able to afford to do something about it. But might be able to come up with a stopgap solution. I think USB capture devices aren't too bad now. We might be able to use one of those temporary. It won't be very good. USB ports still seem to work, so we might be able to get away. I think they're quite cheap now. So maybe we'll look into that. We'll see what we can do. I'll come up with something. Anyways, yeah, I'm high treason. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember, don't be a screw-up. Lord DOS 6 2 2 because it's a damn sight better than the shit that's around now. It actually fucking worked when you knew how to... Where did we go wrong? Like, where did we fucking go wrong? I mean, you gotta admit, yeah, post video rent. You gotta fucking admit, it's pretty fucking. It's pretty fucking pathetic, isn't it? Really, you know. Most of the shit we have on this channel is like 20, 30 years old, sometimes older. My six megahertz two eight six is fucking ancient. That decrepit piece of crap. And that thing still pretty much works. It's needed a few repairs here and there, and it is repairable when it breaks. You know. It's not like the ISA bus on it failed. It will eventually, because that board's kind of growing and warping, and eventually the traces will go. Yeah, it's actually getting bigger. It doesn't fit its mount holes anymore, because the board's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> like, it's actually bent the case. I had to take some of the mounts out and just put felt pads underneath. I've seen some... I had a TV that did that once, and the, the traces broke in that, and the sound didn't work. I mean, you, you can just reconnect them, but... Uh, it, Again, you, you can actually fix it. The ISA bus hasn't failed in there. PCI Express bus on my Xeon fucking dead. The intensity card seems to be broke. You know, it's... As soon as you get to the 2000s, it all starts going to shit, doesn't it, really? It's, uh... It, I'm not entertained. I'm really just not entertained. It, it's, it's stupid. Like... Is it really wrong of me to expect this shit to last like 20 some years? I don't, because I'm not that stupid, but... It's expensive now! <laughs> like, when I bought a machine in the K7 days, you could build a fully working machine for less than 100 quid. If you bought it all brown box, and especially if you knew the guy who owned the computer, parts supply shop, like, at the top of Prince's Key, that used to kind of help a bit as well, but... You could build a machine for like... Less than 100 quid, and it would be powerfully good, powerfully usable. It wouldn't be the fastest thing on the planet, but it wouldn't be awfully slow. Uh, certainly not to the extent some of the shit is now. You know, you'd at least get a 20 gig hard drive in there. Now you 32 gig. Yeah, what the fuck is this? When did that become acceptable again to have like a sub 500 gigabyte hard drive in 2000 and fucking 20 whatever we're on now? Like, no. Fuck you. I won't have less than 500 gig. Give me another year, I won't have less than one terabyte. I won't stand for it. There's no excuse. And those machines, they won't last long. You get maybe a couple of years, and they start breaking down. The capacitor plug was at, a, at its peak. The parts you'd put in there were the cheapest shit you could get. 
You could usually stretch him to five yards, if not more, if you had the patience. And if you weren't mad when they died, because it's like, I got a whole fucking machine for under 100 quid. Once it's done a few months, it's basically paid for itself. You can't do that now. This, this shit costs, like, you know, well into three figures. Workstation, well into four fucking figures. I expect better. Like I said, motherboard's still under warranty. Super Micro has been good on warranties to me. The one time I had something broken years ago, and it was broken shipping as far as I could tell. They did replace it, so yeah, I might be able to save a bit on that if I can find out what they'll replace it with. If it's going to be another one the same model, I'm not interested because, like I say, software updates. They fucked me over. I, I need to upgrade. Apparently it's a Haswell issue, but I don't believe it. I think it's more a let's sell hardware issue because nothing's evolving anymore. Video cards, I guess Intel's going to get a monopoly because, hey, you know the Bitcoin is, and it's not even a thing anymore, but the prices just never fucking came down. It's funny how when they start making ASICs and PCBs of their own because the video cards were doing, that shit got cheaper. Because usually that's how supply and demand works, but I guess people buying more products somehow cost the video card manufacturers money. So I'm probably going to have Intel graphics on the next machine, which work fine for me. I wish I'd done it on this one, to be honest, sometimes. Uh, they have some features I could like actually make use of. Uh, it, it, it just ain't right. Ah, oh, jeez, really? That broke, has it? Well, that's alright. I was done anyway. If that doesn't sum up the kind of look I'm having, I don't know what does. I'm fucking out of here. I want my lunch. When I get hungry, I get fucking annoyed. And if I give it another five minutes, I'm going to start kicking things. So I'll see you next time. Like I said, don't worry about it. We'll get there and we'll work with it. You, you, if you've been here a long time, you'll know I'm a resourceful bastard and I don't quit easy. So, yeah, we'll still get shit done. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Whatever it may be.